Serious, parents of Reddit, what was a legit reason why you didn't let your son daughter have that friend over go to her sleepover? Not bad, and he could stay over, my brother was in the closet, but my parents knew and he wanted his friend to spend the night. My parents said yes, but they had to sleep in the living room, he then got pee off and it didn't happen. Nice try buddy, we've all been blocked by our parents. It's so infuriating at the time and then you grow up and it's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Mayo. Two different friends with moms that smoked M. One in 5th grade and one in 6th. They actually both lived with us at one point or another. The kid in 5th grade was a nice guy, a little hyper and kind of mischievous, but had a really good heart when you take him home environment into account. He ended up staying with us for a week when his mom lost the house they lived in, I think after that he went to live with a relative. I didn't see him again until we were adults and he just happened to come into my work. He's a bodybuilder now. My mom stopped letting me go over to his place long before he came to stay with us though. Apparently one time his mom just straight up asked my mom if she wanted to smoke some M with her. Which he declined and quickly got us the frick out of there. The kid in 6th grade was introduced to me through a mutual friend. I came home from a weekend at his place and told my mom about my time over there. She asked me a bunch of follow up questions. Ending with does it smell like they have cats I told her yes. And she asked but they don't have any cats. Do they and I said no. I didn't see any. She gave me a solemn look and said that I wasn't allowed to go there anymore. But he was allowed to stay over here. After a few years of us being friends his mother dropped him off at my place one night with no warning. He and I didn't know what was going on. But I know now that his mom had a heart to heart with mine. Saying that she knew she was going to be arrested soon. And that our house was the safest possible place for her son. As my mom was the only person she was even acquainted with that wasn't a drug addict. This kid and I had become extremely close over the years. And my mom loves him very much. So without blinking she agreed to take custody of him. So he became my adopted brother. Sort of. Flash forwards. A CPS agent is at our door with a custody release form. She tells my mom that my friend brother's dad has been cleared to take custody. My friend wants to live with his dad more than anything. So my mom tearfully gives up custody. I see him at school a week later. And he tells me he's been put in a foster home. He was never going to his dad's at all. It took years for him to believe that CPS had deceived my mother into giving up custody. And that we didn't just give him away. It makes me want to cry thinking about him feeling like we abandoned him. He graduated high school in the foster care system and joined the marines. I haven't seen him in 6 years. I miss my brother. I had a friend from school who was a year younger so I was like 10 he was 9 and I came over to his house and played some hockey outside. Then we got bored and we started tackling each other and rolling around on the grass. After that we went inside and watched hotel for dogs. Well the next day my friend comes over and says you can't come over anymore I say why not then he said my mom thinks you're gay. Then basically the friendship died that day. I'm 10 and I'm not gay like WTF his mom was a police officer too she should have known we were playing. That's awful. I didn't know it at the time, but my best friend growing up was gay. Gay wasn't even a thing that registered to me. Michael just liked to play dress up get makeup done with my sisters. Little weird but whatever. He's a cool dude. My parents older siblings however totally knew, and they couldn't have given less of a crap. I only found this out 15 plus years later but no one ever came to my birthday parties as a kid in elementary school. I had an abusive family life where I would come into school with a lot of unusual bruises and regularly I had dirty clothes and hair. I thought it was perfectly normal because that's all I knew. I was always welcome at other homes but no one would come to mine. A friend of mine's mother told after I had moved out and was on my own in college that she always worried about my home life and wouldn't let her daughter over because she was so concerned. It took a lot of time and therapy to come to terms with that. Not that she wouldn't let her daughter come over out of concern but that she didn't have enough concern to say anything about me. Your last sentence resonates with me so much. It's a very specific feeling of betrayal. I was the kid in this situation. I was 10 years old, and I had a very self-obsessed friend, but it was no biggie, until she started stealing from me, and then from my sister, and then from my parents. Each time she came, something was missing, 
when it was me, I blamed my sister, when it was my sister, she blamed me, we didn't really realized it was her until money that was around the house started disappearing, my mom did one plus one, and told me to tell her she's not allowed to be my friend anymore, I was sad about it, but it was also kind of a relief. IDKY but it felt very high maintenance to be friends with her. I was around 10 11 and I could feel like I was happier and had more freedom. Does that make sense? I had a gut feeling that something was just off about a young man that my son was friends with, but couldn't put my finger on it. I refused to let him stay over because of that gut feeling. Years later, it came out that he assaulted a mutual female friend in her sleep. As a parent I never had to make this decision. My child and I had coded responses with each other. I knew from my own experience that these situations can be very tough and your school friends sometimes try to pressure to do things you don't want to do. Especially if they have their own agenda. Basically if my child said may I go do this. I knew she really wanted to and felt comfortable so my answer was yes unless we had family stuff to do. If she said can I I knew she felt uncomfortable or pressured into asking so I would have her back and say number. I always trusted my child first and gave her the power to communicate. Learn to trust her own gut and be confident. We made up codes between the two of us for her entire growing up. It worked so well during her teenage years. If she was uncomfortable at a party or situation she would text me a certain phrase and I knew she wanted me to call her with a reason to leave. We also never had curfews. Each event was different we would talk about it and decide together what time she would be home. Now as a grown up she has thanked me a lot and said this was one of the best things I did for her growing up. She always felt like we were in it together. We were and she is turning out to be an amazing person. This was a very rewarding part of being a parent. Not her parent but my sister is 9 years younger than me. Wouldn't accept her ex-boyfriend. Not being toxic in the whole defensive act some big brothers do. I just didn't like the guy. He was super emo and I could just see some light in my sister going out. He was really possessive of her and whispering like freaking worm tongue in her ear all the time. Weird stuff now, not like whispering secret little jokes but whispering conversations. I assumed they were mocking me or my family. I ended up making a demand that he not be in the house if I was home. Not something I have ever dreamt of doing before or since. Turned out he was whispering super dark crap about suicide. Self harm as well as subtly belittling and completely emotionally blackmailing her. She broke down and told my mum all about it. Thankfully, they then broke up but he hung around trying to contact her for ages. He'd be telling her that if she didn't go back to him that he'd hurt himself etc etc. It took a while but it fizzled out. She was back to herself in no time. Thanks to Bejesus. Fast forward 10 years, I'm on an A&E shift. I assess some poor girl who has addiction and mental health problems. She'd had a few suicide attempts in the last year. Lo and behold, who's her boyfriend? The same scrawny little bollocks. He refused to acknowledge my existence when I assessed her. He just sat there looking at her and grinned. Not smiling but bloody grinning. The whole time. Psychopath. This didn't happen to me but one time my cousins, 8 and 10 years old, wanted to have this older kid, just turned 18, over from their church to spend a night. The guy wasn't really weird at all and seemed nice and I'd hung out with him a lot but their mom just didn't feel right about it and said no. About 2 years later it came out that he had been molesting kids at another church he was going to and had gotten arrested. Crazy stuff. My kid is not allowed to go to his friend's house down the street. Too much police activity there, including a friend of that family arrested for selling drugs from there while visiting. No whoop. I have told him it's not a safe house, and his friend can come here but he can't go there. There are other reasons why I don't trust their judgment, but I figure the drug stuff is enough, right? Not parent, I was the kid, used to be friends with this girl that I met at sporting events around 10 times a year and I would always want to hang out with her and spend a lot more time with her than I was ever allowed to. She gave my parents a really off vibe, and apparently used to ask really inappropriate questions. My parents wouldn't let me go to hers at all. A month ago, she was imprisoned for killing her ex fiance by beating him. Tying him to her car and dragging him before stabbing him multiple times and then setting his body on fire. She had help but she was the main one. Dodge a bullet there. 
Dad is a chain smoker and smokes in the house. We'll have my daughter's friends stay over. But we'll find an excuse to have her take a shower early on. Go to the park. Swimming. Etc. Our daughter can't stay there overnight. And even if she is there for a few hours she showers and changes clothes as soon as she gets home. I've only had to do it once. The kid was in my son's class and walked home with him just about every day. I babysat him a lot because of the mom's work schedule and how close they lived to the house. That ended when the kid accused his and my son's teacher of molesting him. He claimed that the teacher would have male students come sit behind his desk to go over work and molest them under the desk. He also claimed that my son who was 8 at the time was one of the victims. Except, my son had no idea what the heck I was talking about when I gently prodded with questions. The school did interviews with a counselor with all the other boys the kid claimed were molested. None of them corroborated his story. The school has cameras in every classroom and could find no instance of any students going behind the teacher's desk in however long they had backed up. I kept him at my house one day while the school got things in order to switch him to a different classroom, and all the kid did was brag about how he was gonna get that F got fired. F ghosted the mom and never let that kid in my house again. I have a compromised immune system and the kids aren't vaccinated. It happens we will be somewhere the kids make friends. I go talk to the parents about setting up a play date and find out they don't vaccinate, can't risk my health. I feel so bad for unvaccinated children. It's not their fault but they will deal with so many consequences. My dad never allowed me to sleep over at my friend's house. He said that my friend's dad looked like a pedophile. He was. My dad may have been passed out drunk pretty much all of the time, but he also always tried to be the best dad he could to me. It didn't work all the time, but god bless him. He tried. I only allow sleepovers with close family and friends due to my childhood. But, assuming that was not the case, the girl next door asked for a sleepover. She was maybe 8, and my daughter was 6. This was about 6 months ago. The first time the girl came over to play, she told me to put my macaw in his cage where he belongs because birds should be in cages and she didn't like him. I told her she could go back outside if she didn't want to be near him, but I would not lock him up. She also informed me that she was going to need me to make her dinner, right now, because she was hungry. It was not even 4pm and she had not been invited for dinner. She was extremely demanding and disrespectful. She complained about the snack I gave her even. When the girls went to play outside, she made my daughter cry 3 times in maybe 40 minutes. This was the first and only time she was allowed to play with my daughter. When I told her it was time for her to go home. She asked to spend the night. I told her no. Then she informed me that her parents, who I have never met, had already said my daughter could spend the night with her. I again said no. She demanded to know why. And I told her that I would have had to know her family personally for several years before I would entrust my daughter with them. I left out the part where she was extremely disrespectful. And obviously had no discipline and had never been told no in her life. Not that it made a difference, but my daughter is high functioning autistic, so if something were to happen that she did not have the emotional or verbal skills to tell me about, I would never know. I have told the girl no every time since that she asked to play with my daughter. 9 times out of 10 it's because I don't trust the friend's parents. I had neighbors recently that would train their kids to claim other people's kids did something. That is, broke a TV, that was already broke, etc. To try to get money put of them. Some parents will claim their kid said something happened just to start drama. Like that your kid touched their privates or something. There are a lot of sick and manipulative people out there. I was that kid that wasn't allowed near my friend. He had started getting into drugs and other stuff a year before then he tried to commit suicide at 17 and his parents didn't know which of his friends were the bad element so they cut everyone off. He was one of my closest friends but I understood the parents decision. I never did see him again after that. I saw on Facebook years later he had joined the military and was deployed to Iraq. I haven't checked up on him in 10 years or so. Hope he's okay. Miss your Chris. He, Chris, was 4 my son was 3. He would tell my son to do things he knew not to do. Throwing toys, shrieking, etc. 
I asked my son why he would do those things only when around this boy. My son was extremely uncomfortable but finally answered after I asked him a few times Chris tells me to and if I don't he hits me behind the couch. I addressed it with the parents and their response was boys will be boys. Chris is going to rape a girl behind a dumpster someday and your kid won't be there with him. So good on you. My closest friends were all allowed to spend the night, but it was so difficult, if not impossible, to get a lot of other school friends to spend the night. Excuse after excuse would come each time I'd invite them, but I was always invited to come stay at their house instead. When I got quite a bit older one of the guys finally admitted that it was because my mom was a lesbian and their parents weren't comfortable with them being over there. Texas in the 90s. It never occurred to me one single bit when I was younger though and suddenly a lot of that made sense. So when I was a kid before contouring and highlighting and all the crazy makeup kids put on to just go to high school was around. My mom said I couldn't hang out with this girl Amy because she wore black eyeliner and only s wear black eyeliner. I rallied. Told her she can't judge a person based on eyeliner. I mean, that's freaking insane. After 28 years of best friendship, Amy started sending nudes to my dipshit husband. My mom was right. I should have listened to her back in 1990. Kleptomania. This girl had a brotish, piggy face and trouble making friends. My daughter wanted to help her out and invited her over. The first time a few things went missing, but we put it down to our girl being too nice and the other one too willing to accept any kindness. The next time she came over she went to leave with her hand obviously clenched around something. It was my wedding ring. She told me my kid had given it to her. My girl stayed silent so I knew it wasn't true. Daughter was honest to a fault but would never tattle on anybody a weird kid. My wife interrupted and asked the wee klepto if our daughter had given her anything else. No Lou. Says wee klepto. I wanted to turn her upside down and shake her but my wife is brilliant and asked if maybe she had accidentally forgotten that something fell in her pockets. There was an obvious bunch of tinkling sounds as many of my daughter's favorite trinkets. Money, my wife's own childhood Star Wars minifigures, money and even a Funka Pop emerged one at a time from pockets and crevices. When wife was done I couldn't help myself and made her jump up and down. No more tinkling but a $20 bill fell out from under her shirt. The only place they could have found that was in my daughter's pig bank, which we found broken on her floor and hidden under stuffies and clothes. These girls were 8, now in high school. We klepto is now close to 6 feet tall and at least 200 pounds, and mean as heck but looks even meaner. She bullies other kids and blackmails others for small wrongdoings with her favorite saying, My dad's a cop. I have never really hated a kid. But I cannot stand that B. My 11 year old daughter's friend, friend from our girl scout troop, told her mom a pool lifeguard choked her. I took my kids and the friend to the pool for the day. I didn't get in the pool but was sitting with my feet inside the water as I watched the kids swim and play. Nobody choked or even touched her in a way that suggested or could be mistaken as choking. I realized the girl was bad news. Girl eventually stopped participating in Girl Scouts to my relief. I was definitely the band kid. When I was in middle school my mom divorced my dad and went psycho. I had a horrible relationship with her and when I finally went to live with my dad, things got worse. I stopped seeing her because the verbal and emotional abuse got so bad. I wasn't a bad kid and I did well in school but she was so upset that she couldn't control me that she made up lies about me to my best friend's parents. She called them one day and warned them that my dad wasn't watching over me and would let me go wild, go to parties, do drugs. Smoke and have a ton of sex with multiple guys. Keep in mind, I was only 13 stroke 14 at the time. Of course I never did any of that but her Christian parents were scared for their lives. I wasn't allowed over for a very long time and it ruined our friendship. My dad went in person to try and correct the situation but the damage had already been done. I was the child who decided not to go back. I was 13 at the time, and I was at my buddy's spending the night and we were installing an old game on his computer. It's his birthday and like any good parents, the party was for them and went on till morning. No kids there other than me and his brother. While I'm trying to boot up the game, with my limited knowledge, she suddenly comes downstairs, slurring words and trying what seemed like her hardest. 
to hold onto the doorframe and talked about how I was such a good friend to her son and that I was the coolest kid all while getting close to me and putting an arm around my neck. Then the kicker, she says. With a smell of smoke and 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 I felt physically sick. But I would also have felt bad for leaving him on his birthday so I spent the night. The next morning as I was picked up, she was flirting with my bad while my mom was in the driver's seat. She used to go to high school with them and was saying some bulls along the lines of how she found him handsome back then. All while my mom is trying not to laugh and kick her butt at the same time. I never went back and obviously told my parents about her tonguing me. Also the father once threw me against a wall for showing his son the movie Akira. He thought I was showing him cartoon P as he put it. After meeting him only once, I didn't get good vibes from my daughter's friend's dad. If he was in that house there's absolutely no way my daughter was going to be allowed to be. I know I am horrible but I had been to that friend's house and there was no way my child was staying overnight. It was filthy. Molded food, I mean unhealthy filthy. Luckily my daughter didn't want to stay after we got there. My brother had bipolar depression and would have waves of emotions where he couldn't control it. Turned off a whole bunch of parents. But every now and then there would be another kid he would click with instantly and the parents saw him as a good kid. Him and I spent multiple nights at one friend he made in 5th grade, and it started a whole friendship between the families. My brother and the friend shared big interest in marching band, computers, and counter-strike. One thing after another happened where he ended up taking his own life when he and my brother were in 10th grade. The bond between the family was so big that a picture of him and my brother was displayed on a slideshow of memories. Every now and then we visit his grave, and always leave something for him drumsticks, flowers, and even an ice cold sprite can be seen at his grave. This kid at my son's school has major anger issues, which is not a big surprise, because the mom has major anger issues, and I know this without even speaking to the mom, ever. I witnessed her violently knocking on the classroom door just because the teacher was a couple minutes late letting the kids out, and I also witnessed her screaming at some grocery store employees. I'd like to know why one of my daughter's friend's parents won't let her spend the night. My daughter has slumber parties, beach trips, all sorts of fun with friends gatherings. I never got to experience that as a child. So if my girl asks for a sleepover, or whatnot, the default answer is yes. However, if this one friend comes over, she has to be picked up no later than 11pm. I don't allow drugs in the house or any drinking during these events underage or otherwise. Heck. The girl starts college next year. Isn't she old enough to go to a sleepover and watch Netflix? Play video games? Daughter has asked her what the problem is, but she says parents have never let her stay over at anyone's house overnight. Looking at the rest of these answers, I'd say it's not you. The fact that they let her stay until 11pm shows that they trust you guys, but trust only extends so far. I had strict parents who didn't allow sleepovers. It was a blanket rule didn't matter who it was, it wasn't going to happen. Some people have had bad experiences, or have heard too many horror stories. My parents refused to let me sleep over at one of my friends houses ever. I bugged them for months about it, that's not fair, until one day my mom finally gave in and sat me down. She told me that my friend's older, foster, Brother had been caught molesting his previous foster sisters so there was no way in heck she'd ever let me even be in the same house as that dude if she could help it. Frick. Because last time he swore at the dog and peed on the floor, right in front of us. No weird story either, my son and he were 11, we are watching a movie, and he calls the dog a mother for no reason whatsoever. The movie ends, both boys are asleep. And I wake them to get them to brush their teeth and go to the washroom before bed. He stands up, whips it out, and pisses on the freaking floor. I had his mom pick him up. My son had a friend who I didn't really like. He seemed strange somehow, only to find out he sold pills at school. They do say the parents always know when a friend is a little strange. I simply told my son that we couldn't do today because we were busy. This was about 8 years ago now. I knew this girl in primary school, we must have been 5 at a time, and she had some disturbing behaviors. Picked up one of my hamsters, 
put it on its back and started flicking its feet. Hamster struggled to get out of her grip and bit me when I snatched it away. No hard feelings. Hida. I know you were stressed out. Would pick up random objects and try to take them home. I remember playing Power Rangers with her and this girl fully kicks me in the stomach. She then tried to convince my mum she hadn't. Even though mum had seen the whole thing. Used to make up stories about me and other kids to her mother. Who would then call up the parents to investigate. One day my mum gets a phone call saying I had dropped a table leg on the girl's foot that day at school. But I'd been off sick with a fever. The girl's mum forgot to hang up before she started telling her daughter off. There was a lot of angry screaming. Comma the one time I went to her house. She wouldn't let me use the bathroom. And said I had to pee in a bowl instead. She was quite a bit bigger than me. And blocked the door so I couldn't get out. I was on the verge of wetting myself so I complied, only for her to go running to our mothers announcing I'd peed in a bowl. I know she got shouted at a lot, and her older siblings were always really mean snappy towards their youngest sister. The school was clued up about the family dynamic. Wherever she is I hope she's okay. My mom had a solid rule that I use now and will always use. If your friend can sit here, look me in the eyes and have a conversation with me. I don't like them. Obviously she could tell the difference from being shy versus being shady. I don't think we wouldn't have been friends. I was an awkward thing then and now, and I would have just stopped coming over. I don't think I was able to have a full convo with my BFF's mom until I was friends with her about a year and a half or so. LOL. But it was the early 90s. Just be home by dinner and if you're sleeping over, call home rules applied. I'm a son not a parent yet, but my mom has always been sharpened to know who I was friends with as a kid. I might not have believed my mom at the time to who my bad friends or rough crowd was at the time. But looking back at it 9 times out of 10 my mom was usually right about them. Whether it was drugs, liars, or just outright not being a good friend to her son. My mom could always see through the bulls in people. My son has autism and has special needs friends. One friend of mine we met through work had a little girl with downs. She had a huge crush on my son but would get upset when he had to leave. One day, her mom was kind enough to pick my son up for the girl sleepover party. Mind you these kids are 9-11 range. Everything was going good until we found out she was hitting and scratching our son. We went to go pick him up and she started to hit me too and threw things. My heart hurt, really, and she's a good kid but I won't allow my son to stay over anymore due to that. I feel bad but his safety means more to me. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.